One of my favorite Elimination Chamber matches, and I ain't gonna lie to you. That first one in that promo package, if you guys remember the theme song for that promo package, I, I want to say, I love you, I hate you, I can't live without you, I just can't take any more. Who remembers that, bro? What's good, Josh? Your boy Ross back at you again with another video. So we're gonna check out ten craziest elimination chamber botches by parts unknown. Elimination chamber it's right around the corner in Saudi Arabia. So I decided to check out some elimination chamber related matches and and videos. So um, be on the lookout for that in the next coming days and all the way up until the elimination chamber this year. Um, this should be a good one. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I, I do miss the old format of the Elimination Chamber. It was just much more brutal. But at the same time, I understand that, you know, it's all about making sure the wrestlers are safe. And um, in recent years, they added the padding on the steel grade because it's just better on their bodies. And I'm okay with that. Like what we had at the time that it was created was, you know, unique and, and special. But of course, when they're all when it's all said and done, these are people's bodies that we're you know pretty much watching for our entertainment and falling on anything steel related. It's just hard to really protect yourself. So I'm glad that they did introduce the matting on the outside just to make it a little bit safer for the wrestlers. I, I know some people are like, oh, it kind of takes it away from the the elimination chamber feel, but at the same time. These are human beings that we're watching. So, but this should be a good one. Appreciate the all the love and support in uh, listening jungle to this gym. one. It's one of WWE's most successful original match creations, skirting the right side of convoluted, over the top, and intimidating to create something that feels really, very truly WWE. Mm -hmm. And the matches at the Chamber's house have a pretty good track record too, with huge memorable moments strewn throughout its history. Shawn Michaels' final world title win was a holy sh**. Has yep. that guy just shit himself moment? Edge winning and losing world titles in the same night. Bobby mm -hmm. Lashley picking up the ECW title. Loads of classics. However, every action does have an equal and opposite reaction. So for every great match or fantastic spot in the Elimination Chamber, there will always be a big old Shawn Michaels tight stinking dud or a brutal botch. I wanted a list about people falling down and I always get what I want. I'm Laurie, <laughs> hailing from Parts Fun Known, and these are the 10 craziest Elimination Chamber botches. Number 10, Kalisto get stuck elimination chamber 2015 hmm. the top of an elimination chamber pod is prime real estate for yeah. a high-flying wrestler it's like the mayfair on a monopoly board although actually maybe the top of a ladder is the mayfair so this can be like parkway or wherever's the second highest on your regional variant board mostly american viewership dollarington north carolina i don't know with high risk comes high reward, but also a much greater velocity at which to crash and burn. As Kalisto found out in the first ever Tag Team Elimination Chamber match in 2015, Kalisto's Lucha Dragons partner Sin Cara's botch luck clearly rubbed off in the pod, as when he was scaling the New Day's pod for a cool spot where they sort of dragged his feet through the chains on the top to trap him, they actually just trapped Kalisto for realsies. He then could not get himself free <laughs> for a good few minutes, missing a spot with Sin Cara where they were meant to hit stereo swanton bombs off their pods and leaving his fellow dragon to fly alone. Number nine, Damn. most of the men's tag chamber. So they actually did trap them. <laughs> At one point I stopped watching Elimination Chamber because it kind of got cringe for me. It just, it, it they felt like it was, it, it became the Hell in a Cell. And if you know anything about the Hell in a Cell, Hell in a Cell was supposed to end feuds. And Elimination Chamber was supposed to really just be a, a one-off situation, but then it started happening more and more and, and more. It, it just, it kind of lost its flair as it started happening yearly. You know what I'm saying? So match Elimination Chamber 2020. The second men's tag team Elimination Chamber match in history was definitely a better match than its predecessor overall, but boy was it a sloppy affair. There wasn't one great big snafu that defined this match, but more a, a comedy of errors that led to lots of people falling down. The best part of any list. Grand Metalik tried his best to hit a springboard Hurricane Rana on Big E, but just couldn't get there. Kofi Kingston and Jey <laughs> Uso went for mirrored super kicks, but just kind of got tied up and fell down. And John Morrison <laughs> also went for a springboard and then just 
simply fell down. If only this was where the Jackass Forever sponsorship had come in. It's the perfect advert. No shade though, because there is loads going on in an Elimination Chamber match with just six people involved, and doubling that total leaves you with a whole lot of moving parts. Yeah, it's it's balances have some type of botches because there's a lot of things going on at the same time. So it, it's it's kind of one of them situations where if you do get a botch in a, a multi-man match like that, it's like, ah, as long as it's not too, too noticeable, it's like, ah, it, it happens. It's just one of those things that is so much going on at one time. I mean, it's at least six, seven, eight, carry, carry on. At least it's like 10 moving parts. Number eight, Sarah Logan wipes out Natalia, Elimination Chamber 2020. Hey, hey guys, do you want to see a dead body? Now, the women's chamber match in 2020 is most remembered for Shayna Baszler running through everyone in How the one good thing been. they ever did for her on the main roster. Those absolute bloody idiots. But before Baszler... How it should have been, and then they didn't really capitalize on that. She should have killed everybody in that match, damn near, and then went on to take the title from Becky Lynch, but that didn't happen. We're not gonna go into that. Broke out of her pod and munched her way through the competition like the Cookie Monster at a bake sale. A terrifying moment occurred between Sarah Logan and Natalia. Logan was the third woman to enter the match, joining Ruby Riot and Natalia. And after some brief offense, Logan scaled a pod and leapt off to hit a high cross on Ruby and Natty. All things considered, this is actually a pretty safe spot nine times out of ten. However, this was the one out of ten because the brunt of Logan's body collided with Ruby, leaving her knees to collide with Natty's mm. face lights out. Honestly, it's a wonder Natalia even managed to finish the match after that because that looked like a knockout Damn. blow. They should call that the go to sleep and don't come back. Number seven, Sasha Banks don't no sells the, the Twisted Bliss Elimination Chamber 2018. Going to the top of the pod has not worked out well for the folks on this list so far, so let's see if we can change that. Can we bollocks? Because yet another example of Elimination Chamber airtime going badly happened during the first ever Women's Elimination Chamber match in 2018. Alexa Bliss and Sasha Banks were two of the standout performers, and everything built up to what would have been the biggest spot of the match as Bliss was perched on top of a pod. She hit probably the biggest twisted Bliss of her entire career in what surely would have won her the match and earned her her ticket to WrestleMania. Except Except it didn't. Because Sasha Banks took the full force of the move, then she no-sold it, turned <laughs> this over, and locked in the bank statement. I reckon what was supposed to happen was sort of a seamless roll through as the Twisted Bliss hit, essentially countering it into the bank statement, but here it just looked like Alexa used Twisted Bliss, it doesn't affect Banks type Pokemon. It was a great <laughs> facts, bro. <laughs> that's that's a good comparison. <laughs> she hits Twisted Bliss. It's not a very effective against this Pokemon. Who remember them days? Who remember them days of just trying your luck? You're running out of Pokemon. This is the last Pokemon you have left that's healed up. You try to use it. It's not effective. What do you do? That's exactly what happened here. <laughs> Hit a finishing move. It's supposed to be super effective. Off, uh, off the top of a pod. Doesn't matter. It doesn't affect Sasha. Stop the fucking banks. Great idea, but the execution resulted in the biggest move of Bliss's career to that point essentially being no sold. Number six, That's WWE funny. opens the wrong door, Survivor Series 2002. Now, this certainly isn't the most famous mistake to come from the first ever Elimination Chamber match. We will get Fantastic there. It is a marathon, match, so. not a sprint, my Fantastic. friends. Now, the first Chamber match ended up being a much better match than you would expect mm -hmm. when you hear about all of the trouble that the competitors went through, but when you watch it, you just don't know that that's happening. Mm -hmm. Now, Shawn Michaels ended up being the final man to enter the match, but this was not by design. Chris Jericho later revealed that Kane's pod was accidentally opened early in the place oh. of Michaels. You wouldn't know from watching the match because the guys are serious pros, but it meant that all the work they had done to carefully plan out Michaels' spots had to go out of the window and a good chunk of the match had to be called on the fly. Damn, I never knew that. That's impressive how everyone just kept going. That's one of my favorite Elimination Chamber matches, and I ain't gonna lie to you. That first one in that promo package, if you guys remember the theme song for that promo package, I want to say, I love you, I hate you, I can't live without you, I just can't take any more. Who remembers that, bro? Always, always, always. <laughs> bro, it's just that, that song, just the song itself brought me back 
memories, like brought me back good nostalgic memories from that very first uh, Elimination Chamber. And the fact I didn't even know this was a botch, he was supposed to come in sooner, that's, that just shows the testament of how professional all these guys were. And it just went on seamlessly. Fantastic match. Essentially, it's a very frustrating day for Raw's finest, made even worse by finding out they would be bumping on Metal Great for half mm -hmm. an hour. I mean, someone had to do it first before they could make it, you know, ever so slightly safer, but not by much. Number five, The Undertaker falls out of the chamber. No way out, 2008. Sometimes things go wrong to such an extent that your suspension of disbelief just disbeliefs itself mid-match. Now, one of the competitors falling out of the cage certainly qualifies. At No Way Out 2008, six SmackDown and ECW stars competed for a shot at Edge's World Heavyweight title at WrestleMania. During the match, Viscera managed to headbutt Taker so hard that he stumbled backwards, he hit the cage door, and then the door opened and he fell out to the floor, much to the surprise of everyone. Oh, uh, the door's open. <laughs> Why are we in here? Why are we in here again? What are we yeah. doing? Undertaker tumbled to the floor, doing his best to catch himself on anything around him, but this was a nasty spill. Thankfully, though, Taker wasn't injured from the fall, but the same could not be said for Ranjin Singh. Just a few minutes later, as Undertaker booted him through the door, he planted his knee on the concrete, tearing Ooh. his ACL and taking him off TV for several months. Damn. A cheeky little bonus botch in there for you. Oh, Number four, wow. Test Eliminates Bob Holly, December to Dismember 2006. That the entire December Extreme Elimination chamber could find its way onto this list for being one of the biggest disasters to ever grace a wrestling ring. The booking appeared to be designed to piss off as many people as possible. It came at the end of WWE's worst pay-per-view ever. Caliber stars, if you ask me, were working as sort of a makeshift team until Tess decided that no, they weren't and tried to hit Bob Holly with a big boot. Tess goes for the pin and the ref counted one. The ref counted two. The ref did not count three. Bob Holly did not kick out. They then just all look at each other before saying, okay, oh, wow. now, Bob. Get out now. What even what? went wrong here, guys? Uh -huh. This match did not need a monumentally botched elimination to be terrible, but on this show, for some reason, December when it rains, dismember, it man. pours. Number three, mm -mm. WWE sets The Undertaker on fire. Elimination Chamber 2010. So this one may not have happened inside the Elimination Chamber itself, but walking to the ring is close enough when the botch is this big. When The Undertaker's famous entrance theme hits, you can always think to yourself as a wrestling fan, I mean, he's probably going to be about five minutes. Mm -hmm. I can go to the bathroom, <laughs> I can make a sandwich, and oh God, why is he running? Why is he running? That is a real dick in a zipper moment if you ain't expecting it, folks. The botch has been edited out of the network version of the match, but you can still see fan footage of The Undertaker Undertaker making his entrance like he always does, only before, to be yeah. completely engulfed in flames. Not once, not twice, but thrice. Considering that then The Undertaker had to complete an entire elimination chamber match with a charred chest where Chris Jericho was going to have to press said charred chest to the mat, this is a oh, legendary damn. performance for the dead man. Number two, Roman... I, I, I want to be <laughs> brutally honest here. That's... That... <laughs> Taker's a badass, man. Because most people would be like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I just got set on fire. I'm good. But the fact that he went out there and still did his thing shows why he was, the, he was the leader of the locker room, bro. He stayed in character for the most part. He did what he had to do. Now, this one right here, RVD crushing Triple H's throat. This one was crazy, too. I didn't know this had happened in, during, the, during the match. I thought just Triple H was selling the hell out of, I believe, RVD was coming off the top of the pod or whatnot, so uh, landing on Triple H, I'm just thinking he's just selling selling the move, but bruh, this this is why I say you wouldn't have been able to tell there was botches going on in this match unless you really knew what was supposed to happen, and, and they still carried a fantastic match. Damn crushes Triple H's throat, Survivor Series 2002. And now we've come back around to the first ever Elimination mm -hmm. Chamber match. Now, Triple H may have turned a good portion of the internet against him throughout his career, but no one can deny that the man is a tough son of a bitch He's who tough, competes bro. through injury better than most can dream of. Now, Rob Van Dam's five-star frog splash has Ooh. been described as painful on the best of days. Unfortunately for Triple H, this was the worst of days. It was the blurst of times. It blurst all of the blood vessels in his neck. Rob Van Dam climbed to the top of the pod and in a very cramped, tight space, hit Triple H with a frog splash. Now, the only problem was that RVD landed with his leg on Triple H's neck, essentially crushing his throat with over 25 minutes left in Triple H's night. And he'd already spat his water out by that point. There was nothing there to soothe the pain. This is honestly a heroic performance from Bro, Hunter, fantastic. battling through to the end of the match when breathing must have been his biggest opponent. Oh Number one, Crazy. the entire Intercontinental Chamber match, Elimination Chamber 2015. 
There really isn't one specific place to start or stop with the madness that was the Intercontinental Championship Elimination Chamber match from 2015. This match managed to somehow be a bigger disaster than the Extreme Elimination Chamber match. Its only saving grace is that it was not at December to dismember. <laughs> Things go off the rails in a hurry here when Mark Henry's pod is rammed and he enters the match before he was supposed to. Henry is clearly quite unsure what to do and just sort of stands there awkwardly before joining the match and things never quite get I don't even think I've ever seen this. You can this. actually hear... I don't think I've ever actually seen this, uh, this, um, I want to say, uh, pay-per-view. I don't think I watched this pay-per-view. I don't even think I've ever seen this actual match, so... Because at some point, I wasn't watching wrestling. Just be honest with you. I had, I had kind of strayed away from wrestling. Uh, I want to say it was a little bit in this period. I wasn't watching it as much. But, uh, yeah, didn't even know this was a thing. <laughs> I didn't know. There was an elimination chamber for the IC Championship. Did not know that. Dolph Ziggler loudly trying to coordinate spots with the entire field while absolutely nothing is taking place and each man just sort of stands there motionless like this is their first ever indie match. Then you got the issue of Sheamus's pod not opening. With the pod not opening, the referees and Sheamus yell at each other while they're unable to get the door open before Sheamus kneels down and tries to make it seem like he rigged the door to stay shut by jamming it with his cross. In another match, this thinking may be looked at as creative, but the last thing this match needed was another thing going wrong. Mm -hmm. And that is our List. Wow, I didn't know Are that. there any elimination chamber boxes? Did not know that, man. This was a cool list. Uh, still, one of my favorite elimination chambers of all time, 2002. Enjoy that elimination chamber. Uh, that was just, it was just a good one. It was a very fantastic one, first one. And the botches that happened in that match, you couldn't even really tell. Once again, something about that promo package and that song just gets you hype, man. Oh, nostalgia at its best. But comment down below. Let me know what's your favorite Elimination Chamber match. Um, For me, it has to be the first one. Just watching that, seeing that, I'm like, how is this going to happen? How is this going to work? And it worked. And we got Shawn Michaels as the champion. Granted, his title reign wasn't that long, but to see him as world champ again was pretty cool. It was just a good moment, bro. JR on commentary, fantastic. I, I damn near want to go watch this match after I finish recording this video. But appreciate all the love and support. Road to 70K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one.